Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to Be Radiant Health. My name is Angela, and I'm speaking to Tara Millen today of 40 Below Fruity. That's her website and also her YouTube, YouTube channel and also Facebook, 40 Below Fruity. And she is a low-fat raw vegan. Um, she's also an animal rights activist and she's living in British Columbia and she's doing great things in the world. So I just wanted to chat with her today and share all of her inspiring information with you today. Hi Tara, welcome. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome, thanks for joining me. Uh, so, that's not really how's the weather there today? It's uh, snowy, as per usual. Yeah, it's actually really mild, which is quite nice, because it can get really, really cold here in the interior of British Columbia. But it's about uh, probably minus five right now, and just a little bit gray outside, so generally a really nice day. Nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, um, what brought you to this lifestyle, Tara? I, just, I, I know that you can read all about it, and you have so many videos on YouTube, but just a, a quick recap. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I really wasn't feeling my best. I had been overweight for years and I had gone from diet to diet to diet and I was just sick and tired of the yo-yoing and not feeling comfortable in my skin and you know I, I found a book one night. I was working at a bookstore and it was a book called Skinny Bitch and cleverly, uh, clever title there because uh, it, you know I just thought oh yeah I really want to get skinny and that was my, my sole purpose in life was to get skinny and I failed up to that point and found that book, I read it, I found it just, it was, it was great, it was really humorous, but really serious as well, mm -hmm. and it opened my eye to a whole new world of happenings that I had no idea about, and so I adopted a plant-based lifestyle overnight, just because I was so shocked and horrified, and, of, you know, what uh, animals and factory farms and that sort of thing, and then I, uh, I, I went to the only person who I really knew who was living a plant-based lifestyle, and it was a family member, and she told me all about raw foods, and I watched a video and I was so inspired and I went, you know what, this makes total sense. And I just, I had this drive inside of me that I was willing to do anything, whatever it took, just to feel better and to feel vibrant. And these people looked vibrant and health and they were promising all these results. And I went, yes, I'm going to embrace this. And that was the high fat raw lifestyle. Um, and it took me a while, it took me a couple of years of living that lifestyle before I found the low fat version, which has brought me incredible results. So really, all I had to do with was just being unhealthy. You know, I tried to be fit. I really, really tried. You know, I thought I was doing the right things like so many people struggle with nowadays, you know, following all these different lifestyles and, you know, the, the food pyramid in Canada and the United States. And I thought what I was doing was right, but I wasn't getting the results. So I was desperate to, to find the answer. Really. Yeah. How, how long ago was that? that um, that was... About five years ago, I've been, actually, I just had my, my fifth year vegan anniversary in January. And, uh, yes, it was five years ago that I just, I reached an all-point low. I mentioned in a video that I posted before that um, it was it was New Year's Eve, actually, and I went vegan on January 5th. And I ate almost an entire cheesecake without realizing it because I was intoxicated. And I realized then that I was just out of control and, and in a downward spiral binging and that it was not sustainable. And so that's why I had all the motivation to switch my lifestyle. Sometimes we need those down points, don't we? Those are like really what spiral us into <laughs> making change. So it's yeah. kind of a good thing sometimes. So it's important to have that contrast because mm -hmm. if you don't know how bad you can feel, then you know sometimes you just don't have the motivation to change to make you know, right. great changes. It's called hitting bottom. Yeah. <laughs> so how long I had definitely... How long do you think it took you to um, to start feeling better? You know, like what were some of the the things you went through when you were transitioning well, from vegan? Because I went, you know, I, I adopted a plant based lifestyle, and I really had no idea what to eat. I did eat a lot of processed food at the beginning, baked chicken, and one of the recipes in the book was, you know baked potatoes or baked french fries, so I covered them in probably about a cup of olive oil, and I went, oh great, I'm eating so healthy now, and I just, I had no idea, so, and you know, one day I, ate, I made uh, peanut butter cookies, a whole batch of about 20 cookies, and ate them all, because I thought that if they were plant-based, it was fine, so I wasn't really making the right steps in the beginning to feel great right off the bat, but I noticed an immediate improvement. Uh, all of a sudden, I, well, first off, it was my bowels, my digestion. I thought there was something wrong with me, really, because I had never experienced such easy digestion before. I always had difficulties with it. So 
That was even just adopting a plant-based lifestyle and then going to the high fat raw and then especially when going to low fat raw, immediately digestion. I started losing weight within, you know, a couple of weeks and I felt incredible and I went, yeah, this is, this feels really right. And so, you know, because I adopted a high fat lifestyle at first, at the beginning it seemed great, but then the reality started to set in that calorie restriction just wasn't working and eating two to three cups of nuts a day wasn't working either. So I went from feeling really great in the beginning to going through about two years where it was really, really challenging. And I just yo-yoed up and down. I had cooked food cravings. And one of the things that I was experiencing on a regular basis was spontaneous vomiting after eating meals. And it wasn't by choice. It was just I, I had talked to a, a naturopath, and they said that I, I had low hydrochloric acid levels in my stomach, which was probably because of the fat I was eating. So I went through about a two-year period where I just did not feel good, and my skin turned yellow, and I knew it wasn't right. And then once I adopted a low-fat plant-based diet, the raw food lifestyle, which is high fruit, eating 3,000 calories of fruit a day, it was immediate. I did gain a little bit of weight in the beginning, and you know my acne flared up because I was detoxifying, but I felt incredible right away. And within the first six months, I just noticed this mental clarity that I had never had before. And you know my teeth were healing. I had receded gums, and they were healing. I lost some weight, and then I just felt clear, you know? And it was absolutely incredible to feel that. So it was the clarity that you gained in the, that really kind of, you noticed right away. That was the, that was Yeah, because I mean, it, there's some things that you deal with when you first adopt um, a low fat, high fruit, raw diet, like a little bit of weight gain and perhaps some indigestion from what you were eating in the past. You can't expect all of that to heal overnight, but definitely the mental clarity right away. It felt like a fog was lifted in my mind, and I could think feet clear for the first time in my life. Wow. That's great. I think that's what everybody is looking for, and we don't really know where to go to get that. It's just getting out of our own way, do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, I do. Um, and so then, how long did it really take you to get comfortable eating this way, you know, figuring out all the ins and outs, and how much fruit to buy, and what to get and how to rotate your fruit. Did it take quite a while to figure that out? Or? And you know what it did? Because it's not the normal lifestyle we're used to living. And, you know, everyone, I find with this lifestyle, everyone is different. And all the leaders have different stories of how long it took them to achieve this and that. And so for me, it was kind of a learning process because my body is particularly sensitive, not towards fruit and vegetables, but towards uh, fat sources like nuts and seeds and coconut. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to figure out that those foods weren't working for me. And so I did experience some challenges. Within the first couple of years, I was going up and down in my weight, and my acne would come back, and then it would go away again. And so I had to really do a process of elimination with my foods to see what made me feel my best and what caused the best outcomes. And so it was about a year ago that I really started feeling comfortable with this lifestyle. I'd been doing it for two years, but I was kind of, you know, to be blunt, I was doing it a bit half-assed. I was eating raw, but I was eating too much fat, and I would eat salt now and again benefiting me. So about a year ago, I really became committed and I said, you know what, I really want the best results I can get and I want to be able to inspire others. So I buckled down, I cut out, you know, salt from my diet and started lowering the amount of nuts and seeds, exercising a bit more and then everything from that point on transformed. And so for the last year, it's just been a progression of everything getting better and better. And now I feel the best I've ever felt. I'm just about in March, I'll be at my three-year anniversary for the low-fat, high-fruit, plant-based diet, and I feel incredible. And it does take time. I know people will think, two years? I don't want to wait two years to feel my best. But if I had adopted the practices that I knew would benefit me the most in the beginning, I know it would have happened faster, but it's just the journey that I had to go through to get there. Right. So you definitely think it's a journey and a progression because I know a lot of people, um, when they hear all this fruit that, you know, supposedly great for you, but then they try it and they feel terrible and they have a mindset that, um, you know, that they maybe should be eating not as much sugar, that it is really a journey and a process to figure that out because of everything we've learned and what we're told. So, yeah, absolutely. It's a journey. It does not happen overnight. And, you know, if you were eating burgers for years or high fat raw diet like I was, or let's say you had a problem with salt or you're coming from anorexia, bulimia, binging, purging, there's so many problems and I find that the ones who struggle the most are women and that's because we're told we have to look a certain way and act a certain way and eat a certain way and you know everyone comes from different backgrounds so everyone is going to react differently 
to increasing the amount of fruit in their diet. And detox, you know, the word that's overused more than any other word in this industry, I think, um, is a real phenomena. It actually does happen. And to some people, it happens right away. And to some, not right away. Some people get really ill. Uh, but this is a good thing. I know. I know it's hard to think. You know, when you're when you're sitting, you're sick, and you have you know a lot of phlegm built up, or a cough, or you know sore throat, or Weakness. migraines. What? Yeah, exactly. Whatever your problem may be, it is a good thing because it means that you are detoxifying. Which all that means is that you are getting the bad stuff out, the stuff that has been built up in your body for years. And it's absolutely a journey. It's uh, but it's it's a great journey because you know that you're going to be healthier at the end of it. Right. And do you think the mindset that you need to have when you're going through this is of commitment? Or how do you think somebody can um, adopt a mindset to keep going forward? Because so, there can be so many setbacks and so many, um, you know, red flags of, am I doing this right thing, you know? So what do you think yeah. people need to... Well, I think, I think mindset is everything in every aspect of your life, not just what you're eating. And... I see a lot of people focus on the negative, you know, oh, I'm not getting enough of this, or I'm so worried, or, you know, and they, they stress themselves out more than they need to. And the, the simple fact is, you've never heard your doctor say, you need to eat more burgers, you need to eat more bacon, or more french fries, or more whatever it is, right? The foods that you know you shouldn't be eating. They always say to you, eat more fruits and vegetables, right? <laughs> right. So, I mean, intuitively, we know we're on the right path, okay? We see these people who are living this lifestyle and are vibrant and just incredibly healthy, and you just have to trust. So it's getting in a mindset of accepting who you're going to be during the journey. And accepting that there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows, but committing yourself to it. And I find that actually doing a challenge, you know, doing a 30-day challenge, 60 days, six months, whatever you feel, you can commit to at this point. I think that that's the best way to do it. And get a mentor or get a buddy that you can do it with. Somebody who can hold you accountable and provide you with inspiration. And watch video those who are getting the results that you want. Because if you want results like I have or like you have or someone else, then watch those videos. Take their advice, right? And maybe get mentoring from, some, from one of those people or something like that. But stick with it for a good period of time. And do a daily journal. Write down how you feel each day, what you're going through. But also keep in mind the diet and lifestyle you've had in the past. So it, I think it definitely does take a commitment. But I think that, you know, giving self-love affirmations like, I accept this process, I love myself for who I am now, and visualizing where you want to come out at the end of the 30 days or 60 days or however long you're doing it for, visualizing that outcome that you want to achieve, right, and focusing on the positive. Because we can make any area of our lives negative. We can focus on the negative at any time, right? But you've got to be grateful for the fact that we've got this beautiful food to eat and that we have the opportunity to choose health. I think that people lose sight of that, but we have an incredible opportunity. We're very privileged that we have the option to choose to be healthy because a lot of people don't. So I think focusing on that is really key. Absolutely, and maybe looking at detox in a different way, you know, that our bodies are actually working. You know, what an incredible machine we have here. You know, all of the symptoms we have for detox, that's actually our bodies trying to balance themselves out instead of looking at it as, yep. poor me or why me, <laughs> which I think yeah. people tend to. So it's winter time. How do you do this in the winter? Uh, a lot of people ask me that, and they say, there's no way I can eat fruit when it's this cold. Absolutely. And you know what? I used to think that, too. Uh, when I was calorie-restricting on a high-fat raw diet, I tried so hard, and it was more about me wanting to prove to other people that I could do it than actually doing it for myself. And I caved in, and I ate lentil soup. And I mean, I have a vegan partner who eats cooked food. I cook for him all the time. So my main... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, tip for eating raw food in the winter is to eat enough because if I don't eat enough, if I were to eat 1,000 calories a day, 2,000 calories a day, I'd be hungry. And as soon as you're hungry, you lower the standards for what you're willing to eat because you get cooked food cravings and then, you know, your mindset changes to, oh, can I do this? I'm so worried. Oh, what if I, it's just, it's just one cup of potatoes or one cup of lentils or it's just one chocolate bar and then, and then it just spirals from there. So, I'd say definitely uh, eat enough. You have to eat enough. And I know some people struggle in the beginning with eating enough calories, but it's really, it's really, really important that you stay satisfied and enjoy the food you're eating too. Because, you know, real, realistically, I hear people say sometimes, well, we don't get a lot of access to fruit in the winter. And I just went to the grocery store the other day, this 
small little town grocery store, you know, where most of the people here are hunters and animal eaters. And I looked in the grocery store and I went, how can people say we don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables? Right. It's incredible what we have access to. And <clears throat> maybe they're not your favorites, but to even have access to apples and pears, we have papaya in the winter, and bananas and dates and oranges of all varieties. We have them available all year round. So I think, you know, like we've talked about before with the mindset, switching your mindset from one of lack to one of abundance and appreciating what we have access to. And as well, realistically, cooked food does not make you warm. It just, it doesn't. It's, it's something that we convince ourselves of just like when we're sick, we used to eat chicken noodle soup. It doesn't make you well and cooked food doesn't make you warm. Wearing the right clothing, being active in the winter, uh, that's what keeps you warm, realistically. And maybe turning your heat up a bit. <laughs> Or you have somewhere chop, but cooked food is not going to keep you warm, and it's totally possible to eat raw in the winter just by you know eating enough fruit and making foods that you enjoy. You can you can mix up your staples, the foods that you have to eat, like bananas and dates and oranges, and find new ways to prepare them by adding them to a salad dressing or freezing the bananas instead. And there are ways to do it. You have to make it a hobby in a way, make it your prime interest, don't you think? Come up with new and well, exciting yeah. ways. Absolutely, yeah. I, and I say a lot of the times that food is my top priority. And people go, well, isn't that an obsession? And no, it's not an obsession. It's just that I want to feel great all the time. And what I need to do to do that is to eat raw and enjoy what I'm eating. And sometimes you may have to increase the amount of fat you're eating in the winter. I uh, Right now I'm eating half an avocado a day, and I feel really comfortable doing that. In the summer, I don't eat much, but you've sometimes got to make allowances in the winter for changing the way that you eat. But, um, yeah. Yeah, and how, so you, you mentioned before your partner is vegan, but he's not low-fat, raw vegan, right? So do you have to, do you cook for him, and is that something that um, can be challenging, or are you beyond that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, um, he is interested in the, you know, fruity lifestyle, and he does eat a lot of fruit, but realistically, he, he doesn't strive for this, this lifestyle. He feels healthy the way that he is, and he looks great and feels great, and so... I accept that he eats cooked food, and believe it or not, I actually love cooking. I really enjoy it, and bizarre enough, I didn't start enjoying it until I went raw, <laughs> you know, um, but I look at it, and it smells great, and it looks great, too, but I don't actually think of it as food, and taking a bite of it, or, you know, taste testing it, or eating a bowl of it would never provide me with the results I desire, and it would never be worth the negative results I'd get in my life if I did eat that food the negative side effects that I have because realistically I am sensitive. Um, but I don't have to cook for him and he doesn't ask me to, but I get joy out of knowing that he's eating healthy food, that he's making good choices for the planet, for the animals, and for himself. And so, yeah, I mean, right now this morning I just cooked him a roasted butternut squash and sweet potato curry soup. And um, it's cooking right now behind me. And I smelled it and I went, yeah, that smells and looks great, but that's not food to me right. because the last time I ate cooked food, was three years ago in March, and I spent the whole night vomiting. I felt like I had food poisoning for days. I couldn't get out of bed, and I was so weak. My face was just covered in pimples, and I was bloated, and I went, is this how I really want to feel? And so you really got to focus on the foods that you know give you vibrancy. And once you achieve that level of health, there's nothing that could deviate you from it. Nothing is worth it to not feel that way. It goes back to motivation and wanting something bad enough and having a reason for it. So that's what people need to, I guess, go back to when they're having cravings and, and that food that smells so good, but what does, what is it really going to do for me? <laughs> not going to do anything. And everyone I know who eats it regrets it immediately afterwards. And then they have to wait until that food gets out of their body, and as it's releasing from their body, they're going to get even more cravings for it. So motivation is, is key. And you can make raw versions of your favorite cooked foods, there are so many ways that you can do it. You can make zucchini noodles to replace pasta, and delicious sauces in a high-powered blender, or you can make soups. There, you really can, you know, mix up your raw diet to make it exciting. It doesn't have to be boring. You don't just have to sit there eating whole pieces of fruit all day long. It doesn't have to be like that. So I know a lot of people come to this lifestyle when they're sick. Do you think that this lifestyle is for everyone? Do you think it's um, ultimately this lifestyle is for every human? I do, yeah, I do, because everyone who, who I've seen who's living this lifestyle is really thriving on it. Now, of course, if you're really sick and you're coming from a background of seriously disordered eating, 
you may have to go about it in a different manner than those who are coming from a healthier lifestyle, of course. You know, if you were if you were deathly ill and had cancer, you don't just want to switch to a raw food diet overnight. And, you know, it would be a really big shock to your system. So while I do believe this for everyone, I, I believe that each person might have to go, you know, attempt this lifestyle and ease into this lifestyle in a different way. Some people can go overnight, you know, gung-ho straight away. Some people may not be able to if they're sick. But, yeah, I mean... I tried every lifestyle there is to try out there, and I just feel so incredible that I, I can't see anyone not thriving on this lifestyle. And some people do, you know, try the lifestyle, and they either eat too few calories, too much fat, or something is off in their lifestyle because it is a lifestyle. It's not just about what you eat. So if you're not getting enough sleep, not getting enough exercise, or if you're really stressed out all the time, you can't blame the fruit and say it was the fruit's problem. That you know, it, it's a holistic view you've got to have, and. A lifestyle comprises the whole. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think is your number one tip for people transitioning, do you think, to this lifestyle? If you could tell somebody I, one thing. <laughs> I know it's I'd say have patience. Patience most of all. And and don't try it until you really want it. Because if you really want it, you'll be willing to do whatever it takes to get through any challenges you're experiencing. But have patience. Because it takes years to ruin your body, to hurt your body with the food you're eating or the lifestyle you're living. So you've got to have patience and give yourself time and trust in this process. That's really what it's all about. Mm. Yeah, that's perfect. That's great advice. Thank you. So just on a personal note, I've seen your dogs in some of your videos. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? I think a lot of people probably want to know what that's about. Yeah. Yeah, so we were, my partner and I were dog sitting for a little while. They weren't ever our dogs. They belonged to other individuals. But we were looking after 10 huskies for about two months there. And, um, yeah, we loved it. I mean, how can you not? The energy and a pack mentality of dogs is just incredible. And they were, the dogs were treated really, really well, too. So they got lots of exercise all the time. And it was just amazing. And now we're living with, um, we're living, we're renting a place, a different place. And we have two dogs here, and you'll see them fighting in the videos and everything. And they actually love fruit, too. We give them little bits of fruit and peanut butter and things like that. And uh, they really enjoy the plant-based uh, plant foods. Although, you know, we can't control what they eat, so we don't, we don't ever decide that. But, yeah, we just, my partner and I, we both really, really love animals. And we find that our lives are really, our happiness really increases when we're spending time with more animals. Because they're just always joyful. And they never, they never wallow in pity, self-pity, or worry about what you know, their body shape is or anything. You know, they're just always happy, and they're grateful for everything. So we really enjoy spending time with them. They're a great reminder of unconditional love, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they really, really, truly are. Mm -hmm. So you're an animal lover all around, though. Do you, you work protecting animals you have in the past. Do you do that now? And what specifically? Um, Right now, not specifically, um, just because we're living in a pretty remote area and there's, there's not a whole lot I can do at this moment. Um, yeah, I really do. Oh, I'm so passionate about animal, not animal rights, I don't want to say animal rights, but just animals, I guess, right to live or, you know. And I've been involved in campaigns with Sea Shepherd Conservation Society in the past. I've worked on their ships and then uh, gone to Taiji, Japan to help end the dolphin slaughter as well. And um, I'm actually going to sponsor someone later on this year because I've had the opportunity now to go to Taiji a few times, and I mean, it's not its not like I'm itching to go away. It's not like I can't wait to go to Taiji to watch dolphins killed. It's not really an enjoyable campaign, but it's not supposed to be about employment. It's about spreading the word so that we can get this stopped, right? And so later on this year, I'm going to be sponsoring another individual, a young, passionate activist, to go to Taiji so that we can all have opportunities because we each have different groups who we can spread the word to. And everybody I know at this point, for the most part, knows about the dolphin slaughter in Taiji, Japan. If you don't, there's a fantastic movie out there called The Cove um, by Rich, Rick O'Berry. And it's incredibly informative. It's sad, of course. But we have the power to change things. And so I try to do everything in my power to improve the lives of animals who are, you know, it's not just that I love dolphins because dolphins are cute. That has nothing to do with it. Um, I just I have a passion for, for you know, animals to just have the right to, to life like we do, the right to happiness, the right to have their families and live in peace because that's ultimately what we all want. So Absolutely, and that expands. Your... Yeah. That's expa that expands when you start living in a more sustainable way and eating um, foods that are more in alignment with nature, doesn't it? You start to become more passionate. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> and actually that night that I was skinny bitch, I remember speaking to a friend, we were driving home, and I went, yeah, you know what? I wouldn't eat chickens if they weren't so stupid. And <laughs> now I look back on that and I go, how oh, could I have said that, you know? They're no less than myself. And yeah, they may not be at the same intelligence level perhaps, or they may have just different things they want to do in their own lives, but we're all equal when it comes down to it. And when you live a plant-based lifestyle, you really, if, if, even if you didn't come to the plant-based lifestyle under the premise of saving animals, you still start to develop a deeper connection with them and with nature. And sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes it just happens gradually, but most people experience it, and it's really, it's really quite phenomenal. It's really, really nice. Mm, that's a really nice thing. Um, and where can people find out about the shepherd, the, what is it called, shepherds? The e Shepherd. It's oh, um it's e Shepherd dot org. S E A S H E P H E R D dot org. They're actually down in the Southern Ocean Whale Sanctuary in Antarctica right now. Um stopping stopping the Japanese whaling fleet from killing whales and it's an incredibly successful campaign. And essentially, you know, it's it's not about racism, it's not that the Japanese do anything different than another country, but it just happens to be that they target dolphins and whales and that's what Sea Shepherd works towards protecting. So right now they've stopped them from killing any whales. It's going to be the most successful campaign yet. It's called Operation Zero Tolerance, and they are an incredible organization. It's all volunteer run, and my partner and I worked on the ship, the Bob Barker, last year when we were living in Australia, and just the most incredible group of passionate people. And uh, Paul Watson, he's he's on the ship right now, and he's he's an activist. He's a Canadian activist, and he's done absolutely incredible work. That's inspiring. Thank you for letting us know definitely something worth looking yeah. at. <laughs> and you yeah. are also, are you health coaching? How can people find out if they can, how to be supported by you if they want to work with you? Yeah, yeah. So if anyone wants coaching or mentoring or anything like that, it's all available on, on my website, 40blowfruity.com. And I, re I can really tailor it to whatever anyone needs, really. I've got month-long pro programs, but some people either don't have the money for something like that or just don't have the desire for it. Um, I have some clients that just like to do phone consultations or just a week meal plan or, you know, I, I really try to tailor it in cost and content towards each individual's needs, um, you know, whether they, and I, you know, it's not just about raw lifestyles as well because I do cook for my partner. We can do transitional lifestyles, even from transitioning from an animal foods diet to a plant-based diet of any kind, really. Yeah, those are all definitely things mm -hmm. that people can use support on, so it's great to know. And I'll post your information yeah. below as well. So what is your ultimate goal with 40 Below Fruity? Well, originally I just thought, you know, actually I know people think that it exists to really inspire others, and it does. But I also needed support through the winter as well. I'm not immune to the cold and cravings and all that sort of thing. So it's actually helped me a whole lot to get through the winter season. And ultimately I want to be there to inspire others. I want to, you know, be there to provide motivation and inspiration to people who aren't sure about this lifestyle or who are struggling. And ultimately, <clears throat> I, I asked people, you know, about a month ago just to get some feedback. I'd like to do adventure trips because there's a lot of raw retreats and things like that out there. But not everybody just wants to go to a retreat and sit there at a retreat for however long they're there for. So I want to provide adventure trips where we can go to the best fruit markets and the best beaches and do zip lining through the forests or you know, visit a native tribe wherever we are and learn customs and just whatever, you know, adventure means to each individual. And, um, you know, I would like to have a, a sort of retreat in the future as well um, where we can help heal people and, and teach them about natural living and natural lifestyles, natural food, all that. And I'm really open to anything else, to be honest, too. I, uh, as far as I've gone in terms of my vision plan and what I'd like to achieve, uh, my partner and I actually are auditioning to be on the Amazing Race Canada, and I really like to get raw food out to the masses that way, and show that you can live an adventurous lifestyle with this with this diet. So I know a lot of people struggle with that. So I really want to get into the more adventurous side of things and really living life to our full potential. Great. So everybody wants to watch Tara for all the amazing things she's going to be doing. I saw the video <laughs> for the Amazing Race. I hope they pick you guys. That'll be really cool. Um, yeah, it's, so, it's so a keep, challenge, but I, I really like a challenge. So Yeah, definitely. So everyone, keep up with Tara, 40 Below Fruity, and comment here if you like this video. If you have any questions, you can email either of us. And thank you for watching. Thanks, Tara. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.